how's everyone doing today in this beautiful Sunday afternoon? I don't know when you'll see this, but today's Sunday and the sun's out. It's about 50 degrees here in Michigan. Not, it's better than it was. So today, I'm uh, running my gas line to my gen rack. Uh, I figure I better do it while the weather's decent. <clears throat> And I'll uh, kind of take you along for the journey here. I got most of this trench dug. I'm about 18 inches deep. Uh, that's code here in Michigan for underground gas line. I think it's everywhere actually. But um, if it's not, let me know in the comments below. Uh, this was all uh, sandy soil, so it was pretty easy. I'm going to start uh, this from scratch so you can see how this chambering tool works. So basically you got this here it's got some razor blades in it and it's got a little nub you stick in there so basically it's got a square edge now and you stick this in you give it a couple turns and it puts a nice nice bevel on that then you take this in here with this o-ring and you shove it in So, this in here, this riser, this is a inch and a quarter riser. We're like 20, almost two and a half feet radius here. See, this isn't chafered either. just so the, the o-ring slides in when I put this coupler on and on these I got instructions basically like what I told you how it is um, I'm supposed to use some sandpaper I guess it probably yeah it's just basically clean piping thoroughly to assure there's no grease or oil on the assembly area so we should be good this is pretty much brand new stuff This is Continental Industries. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple actually. Just like that. There. Now we'll find out. Once we do some leak checking. This thing should be flowing some volume once I get this all hooked up. That generator, I think, at 22 kW is like uh, 303, 306,000 BTUs, I think. <clears throat> if we lose power for a lot, long time, that may jack up our gas bill titch, but at least I'm not going to lose my food in my fridge. 
meat in the freezer. Tell you. I get this finished I have to call my local government to have them come out and give me permission to make sure everything's good there. so there's that gathering tight ends now I basically gotta finish running my pipe around cut that and then I got to drop my I got a new chunk of the underground marker wire that I got to put down in there This monster thing this is another riser but it's a flexible riser um, so you shove the pipe in through here then it's got like a, a barb fitting the pipe just runs up in there I've never used these before so kind of curious of how they're gonna work so I guess if, if anybody out there has used this, let me know in the comment section below. How do you guys like them?
just got some shavings in there, so I gotta kick that gas on for a second. Oh yeah, I smell the gas. compression fitting I don't believe you gotta dope it we'll figure it out when we get everything buttoned up <laughs> yeah, this works I wasn't too bad actually some Menards and grab some fittings. I may get to be able to get this all done today, I don't know. Just like that. Pretty simple. Oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm looking for a cap. Three quarter inch cap. Oh. Oh. I have to find one with a fire coat on it somewhere. Standing up there, having the lady look it up in the book because she don't know the number on it. Now I need a inch and a quarter by three quarter reducer. Inch and a quarter to three quarters right in front of me. So I need a couple of 45s. Street 45s, regular 45s, and are you kidding me? I don't have any regular 90s. Ugh. Alright, yeah, they were stuck way up in the back. I found two. So now it's time to go check out. And just to let you know. They do have this underground stuff here as well. There's underground wire, tracer wire. They got the three quarter inch risers. Nothing really big though, but three quarter can get you by for a little bit. So I got all my fittings from the nerds. Um, I'm going to start putting this together. So yeah, I mean, homeowners can do this, you know, if you if you got the basic skills down on gas, you know, make sure you dope everything good, and make sure everything's tight. Um, obviously, you got if you use the gas pipe your own generator, you got to make sure you know what size gas pipe you need. And I'll show you the chart on that that comes with the generator but for the typical it's like a small generator you could do yourself like a you know if it's right next right next to the gas meter you know if it's a 14 kW or smaller you can run you know up to a certain amount of feet you can run three quarter inch you can get all that stuff right at your local energy store or I should say big box store. But yeah, you can uh, you can do this yourself if you got the basic skills and knowledge. But if you don't, you hire a professional. I mean, you're they're gonna it's gonna cost you. 
especially when we have to start running some big stuff like this, you know. This is the gas is on. I'm gonna spray my Big Blue by Refrigeration Technologies Micro Leak Detector. This stuff works really good. I think I'm gonna have to fill it up again and blow it out. Yeah, you want to soak that down real good. So today's Sunday, so tomorrow, Monday, I'm going to call for a final from the new mechanical inspector. Never met him before. From what I heard, he's an early nice guy, older gentleman. So it's better than the other one that used to be working in the city. Nothing's gonna be leaking out of that, but just getting it anyways. Yeah, I gotta go put some more in this. Yeah, I think we're good. I'll let that sit for a bit and I'll leave the gas on. And uh, so, <coughs> yeah, like I said, they have this, this, this is inch and a quarter. I actually got this from uh, a big contractor who does like a lot of underground stuff. My neighbor, his son actually works for him. Uh, so he got me that roll and he just says, use what you need and I'll come get it. And I thought that was really nice of him. I really appreciate it. Cause I mean, usually it comes in a hundred, 150 foot roll. And for what I don't do too much underground gasoline. So it would be very wasteful. I would eventually probably use it up in due time, but what's the sense of keeping more junk in my barn, you know? Um, but from the sounds of it, I, I got some some work coming up from places gonna install the generator, installing the generator for me. Um, this is a little high. I see that now from this angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that down and I got ran a piece of, uh, Oh, Unistrut down. It's probably five foot tall, maybe six foot, and I pounded it down into the ground. Then I got to get a Unistrut clamp and put that on there, a three quarter. And then that way it'll, it'll hold everything down. But on these generators, they require you to have this connector here on uh, just for vibration purposes, and it acts as a union so you can disconnect it there. I got another shut off here. Uh, nipple obviously three quarter inch galvanized T a close and then an inch and a quarter to three quarter inch uh, reducer and then basically my drip leg and then I have these pieces in my barn I think one's a six and one's an eight and I use the union or coupling and uh, so yeah that's how you gas pipe that I mean like I said a homeowner can do this himself you just can't be afraid of gas uh, most of homeowners are afraid of gas so that's why that's where I come in and play in a lot of other contractors as well I mean we do this for a living as part of mechanical trade and plumbing so as you can see I have no leaks that's good we don't want leaks no leaks up here either So 
So yeah, we're good to go with the gas lane. I will get a a final on this and then I can backfill this. And uh, this is uh, Sunday before Easter Sunday. So hopefully I like that. Got everything moved around here, so good. Grounds are back over on ground bars, separate from the neutrals, so that everything's good to go. Mm -hmm. And we'll obviously get everything pushed back up in. Keep <laughs> lining in here, but they're gonna. I'll put in some duck seal. Okay. So that hopefully they can't make it into here. Sure, that makes sense. Occasion yeah. Occasionally, I get a service call to get inside here, the contactor, and then it tries to close, and then yeah. they get caught between, and then you lose a phase. Try this at home. <laughs> uh, if you'd lose power, it would uh, start up and do its thing. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, we can run through a test uh, power outage and uh, check it out. Sure. So this is your main disconnect now. 
So if you turn the breaker off in here, it's like removing your utility from your whole house. And that triggers the generator to think that it lost power. So there's a five second delay from startup. So if you have fluctuations, on this side. Mm -hmm. You got green, yellow, and red. Okay. Uh, the Denver has uh, the yellow light on that needs, that needs some kind of maintenance or something minor is wrong with it. And then uh, if it's red, there's something serious wrong, or maybe not serious, like if you accidentally hit these auxiliary switches right here is one. This mm -hmm. is for like fire department, or if you're in here doing an oil change and you forget to do something okay. so it accidentally starts, okay. you can shut it down there. That does an auxiliary shutdown, and that will give you a red light on the side. Okay. And then to bring that back, all you do is turn it where it's back supposed on. to be back up, and you go off, enter. And then you want to bring it, always bring it back to automatic, or it won't start if you lose power. Okay. And then there's one more of those switches just like that on the back, and it operates the exact same way. That's for, like, the fire department, if they had okay. to come shut it down. Sure. And the lid's locked. Yeah, yeah. That's so they can do that. Okay. They know where all that stuff's at? Yep. And, okay. Uh, if you ever have to, uh, if you're out of power for more than 24 hours, they suggest you shut it down and check the oil. Um, to do that, um, what I do is I shut off this break breaker, I'll kill power to your house and remove the load from the generator. And you go to the manual off button, that'll shut it down, and then pull this fuse. Okay. And then you do your oil change, your oil check, whatever you gotta do. And then put do things just the right, the exact opposite. Put a, the fuse back in. Uh, if you're doing an oil change, you can do manual to start it and to get the fluids going. Or if you're actually in a power outage, you just put it back to auto and it'll start back up because it knows it's out of power. Once it starts up for just about 10, 20 seconds, you can turn this breaker back on and bring load back onto the generator. Okay. Good to know. Yep, other than that, that's uh, pretty self-sufficient. Uh, it does have a low oil pressure switch in it. So it'll shut so off if, if it's... If for some reason there's a crazy thing where the oil filter comes loose and all your oil spills out, it'll shut down 
worst that, case scenario. Has that happened before? Uh, I've, se I've seen it on uh, units that I haven't installed. Okay. Because um, I tweak them a little bit from sure. the factory. Sure. Um, it was us. Homeowner did his own change and didn't <laughs> tighten it up enough. One so. little oomphta. <laughs> yep. You gotta have that little oomphta. Luckily, it shut down and didn't ruin the unit. Good. But uh, it was a big mess to clean up. Sure. What uh, what size engine is this? Do you know? It's a uh, 999 cc's. Okay. I think if they went that little extra mile, they'd have emissions concerns. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So the biggest yeah. unit they make on this engine is a 26 kilowatt. Thank God we're not in California. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this unit is. Uh, like your mom's can be swapped out to propane if you wanted to. Yep, just by switching that just, little switch. Yep, right here's the little valve yep. uh, right. to change the orifice, and then in the computer you'd also change it to okay. propane. Okay. So it's a little bit more than just flipping the switch. You got to change that. So that that is the orifice. You just switch that switch, and then you convert to configure yep. it. In. Okay. Yep. That changes the the stepper motor configuration for the gotcha. throttle. Okay. Well, man, thank you. Hey, you're no problem. Yeah, appreciate it. You guys have been awesome and uh, refer you a lot more work. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, everyone. So, we finally got this all hooked up, and um, it's actually a little bit louder than I expected, but at least it's running, it's going to run the whole entire house. Um, so, in the summertime, we lose uh, power, we can still run our our um, AC uh, which before with that uh, portable generator I couldn't run the AC um, and this thing will like I said run the whole entire house no issues and if you're in the Battle Creek area and you need your generator gas pipes reach out to Advantage Heating at 269-966-9595 or you can go to 269comfort.com and schedule online we'll see you on your next job